are a city on the rise that will never lose our small town values. You belong here. I love my hometown and I feel like I belong here and I want everyone to feel that way. All of the work that we do is all encapsulated under our strategic plan that we have. We have six values in that strategic plan. We are bold. Corona has the latest equipment, always optimizing for our citizens. We are humble. Corona, serving our city with pride. We are driven. Come on and join us, guys. We are honest. I am planting some trees, and I'm 100% having fun. We are kind. Pat, you're happy today, huh? I'm so happy for you. We are a team. Yay! Hey, we love it. Thanks for coming, everybody. Good evening, everybody. At this time, I would like to call the meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission to order. Individuals wishing to address the commission are requested to complete a speaker card and deliver it to the Parks and Recreation Commission secretary right over here prior to the item being heard by the commission. Please do observe a three-minute time limit for communications. Once called to speak, and please state your name and city of residence for the record. We'll go ahead and get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Commission Vice Chair Bass, would you mind leading us in the pledge tonight? Thank you very much, Vice Chair Bass. Ms. Vargas, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Munoz? Present. Commissioner Wentworth? <laughs> Present. Vice Chair Bass? Present. <laughs> Chair Olson? Present. And looks and like Commissioner tonight. Kinney's absent. We are missing Commissioner Kinney. Thank you for that. <laughs> Item one, meeting minutes. Approval of the Parks and Recreation meeting minutes of February 13th, 2024. Do we have a motion for approval of the meeting minutes for February 13th, 2024? I make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Munoz. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Wentworth. Let us go ahead and take a vote. Charleston? That passes. Thank you for that. Item number two, consent calendar report. Developer impact fee fund balance bond repayment for January 2024. Do we have a motion? I'll motion. Thank you. Motion by Vice Chair Bass. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Seconded by... Commissioner Wentworth, let us take a vote. Cheryl, sing your vote. Yes. So crazy. And that passes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Vargas, do we have any speaker cards or written comments from the public tonight? No, Chair, no written comments or speaker cards. Thank you for that. And... Next up, youth update. We have a report from the Mayor's Youth Council. Hi guys, good to see you again. My name's Caleb Trushin, and I'll be the representative for the Mayor's Youth Council. So today we just got back from the fire department. I'll speed over here real quick from <laughs> being over there. But uh, today we um, got to meet, um, uh, sorry, Chief Young. We talked to him for a little bit. He gave us a presentation, giving us a rundown about the fire department and its functions. Um, we got to learn about individual stations, individual roles, and really how important the fire department is in prevention from not just fire, but medical safety, homeless, and all sorts of things. Um, we also got a couple little badges. It was fun. Um, we also talked about the, um, the youth program. So it's a lot like the police buddies, but um, they're called the Explorers. It's a new program. Um, and yeah, so you can see it on their website. And that's really all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions or comments from my colleagues? Well, thank you for being involved in the program and kind of touching base on the uh, Explorer program too. That's exciting. Uh, I was a scout, but never an Explorer, so hats off if you join that uh, faction of the youth group. Um, what was the best thing you learned today about the fire department? 
honestly, the best thing I learned is not specifically like what they do, but a statistic about them that most calls they have aren't about fire. 70% of their um, calls are about medical, um, that they are always the first responders there. And so it's good to learn that they're double trained in paramedics, not just fire. And so they're kind of the most well-rounded individuals we have um, as first responders. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Wentworth? Well, thank you for sharing. Commissioner, Commissioner Munoz took my question, so we'll just leave that fun fact right there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Bess? Thank you for being here tonight, Caleb, and for your update. Um, so how can someone join the Explorer program? Do you know? Um, kind of. So I was asking because my little brother um, wanted to be um, a firefighter when he's older, so I was kind of asking him a couple questions. Um, the chief just kind of said, just look it up on our website. It's pretty easy to follow through um, on the Corona Fire Department. Okay. And um, also their Instagram as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. Yes, thank you for the update. Uh, that was, in fact, my question too. And um, very impressive that they do have to be dual trained and they have to be decent cooks as well, right? So they got to take care of each other 24 hours a day. Thank you very much for the update. Okay. Discussion items. Item number three, community service report. We have a report by Ms. Finch. Thank you, Chair Olson. So we have our monthly community services report um, for you today with our updates from the Recreation Services Division as well as the Facility Parks and Trails Division. Uh, Mr. Last is going to give us an update on our upcoming events that we have planned for the month of March, um, as well as a exciting announcement of a new program that we're going to be launching next week over at the CCC, um, and an update on uh, the division's participation in the CPRS conference. And then he's going to turn it over to Mr. Cortez, who's going to give us some information and updates about our guided hike program, um, our Corona Beautiful cleanup events. A city park pop-up event that we did last month uh, for the outreach of the three city park designs and the great feedback we got from there. And then the transfer of the holiday tree to its permanent home at Jamison Park. And Mr. Cortez will provide some fun facts about that. And then I will wrap it up with an update on our upcoming um, uh, agenda items. So I will go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Last to get us started. And thank you, Ms. Finch, and good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, spring is in bloom, and there's plenty um, on the calendar in the weeks ahead here in Corona. Um, first, I'm delighted to invite you all to uh, the Senior Center tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, the Corona Art Association, with support from uh, Corona Rotary, uh, Santiago High School Interact Club, and the Santiago uh, High School Art Club um, are going to be unveiling uh, the 50-foot mural that they are gifting to the city uh, by local artist uh, Lori uh, Alcon. Uh, so super excited about that. I think it's going to be really uh, stimulating, really colorful, and uh, it's been great to see our participants, our participants engaging and um, seeing the work unfold before their eyes there. Um, also this week, uh, we'll be doing... Um, uh, no bake pie day on 314, so 3.14 and a whole bunch of other numbers there. Uh, so celebrating pie day uh, after school there, you can get involved and make a little sweet treat to take home. Uh, on 315, we're going to be doing our adaptive program, St. Patrick's Day Social. These have been, been an absolute hit and everyone's so gracious, uh, glad and uh, um, to see them come back uh, here. Um, on 315, we also have Kids Night Out. So if you're looking for a little adventure as a parent to have your night out, <laughs> you can also uh, swim by the CCC. We have an uh, amazing program. Just make sure you sign up in for that in advance. This weekend, uh, Corona Beautiful will be Arbor Day at the Historic Civic Center. So there'll be all kinds of great plantings as well as information uh, from Moses and his team. On 316, uh, Chips is also going to be doing a historic walking tour, so you can get a docent to guide you through the Historic Civic Center and learn more about it and its unique architecture and features. And you can actually sign up for that on uh, their social media page. Um, the Inspire event, that's actually a carryover, so just ignore that one. We'll move on. Uh, 316 at the Senior Center, we have a trip to La Brea Tar Pits in the Norton Simon Museum. Uh, 323, guided hikes, uh, wildflower expedition, so well, all those beautiful blooms, learn more about those. On th March 23rd and 24th, uh, utilities will be hosting their Household Hazardous Waste Collection at City Hall. This is actually an event I really look forward to as someone who likes to do home projects and has weird things laying around in their garage. So um, you can drop those off and make sure those are safely recycled there. 
And then um, as you're planning ahead for uh, the kids, uh, spring break is coming, and our Kids Club Adventure Camp will be open here at the Vicentia Activity Center, so make sure you sign up for that. Uh, so to learn more about what we're doing, as well as all kinds of great things that are happening in the community, be sure to check out uh, our calendar page on the city website. All right, new for spring, and in response to some outdoor weather conditions, uh, both hot and cold, uh, we're pleased to pilot a new indoor pickleball open gym at the Circle City Center. Residents are encouraged to come out and play the fastest growing sport in the United States. Pickleball is a paddle sport that combines many elements, elements of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. Uh, many players enjoy the social aspects of the game and the benefits of regular physical activity. So nets and lines are provided. Uh, Please bring your own play equipment, and it's going to be $3 drop-in every Tuesday from 8.30 to 11.30, and that's starting next week. Uh, we actually did some striping and testing out our equipment today, and it looks really cool, so I think it'll, uh, folks are going to have a lot of fun with that. All right, two weeks ago, city staff attended uh, the three-day California Park and Recreation Society annual conference in Palm Springs. Uh, pictured left to right, we have Regale Carr, our program coordinator for special events, Paula Munoz, resident, myself, Commissioner Munoz, and uh, Karen Stevenson, our recreation supervisor. We had an amazing uh, keynote from uh, celebrity uh, Baratunde Thurston, who hosts the uh, dynamic uh, PBS show uh, called uh, The American Outdoors. Uh, we attended information sessions and presentations on a variety of topics, including uh, programs, parks maintenance, and even some new technologies. Uh, the exhibitor hall was jam-packed with sample playgrounds, park equipment, and products, as well as some cool digital solutions. Uh, this year, over 1,300 participants attended, representing nearly 500 different cities, counties, and special use districts. Uh, we also had the opportunity to check out the new downtown park uh, in Palm Springs there, which was designed by Rios, who is working on our own city park project. So really cool to see that uh, in operation and what their unique take is there. And that's actually pictured uh, there. And uh, of course, uh, we are proud to represent Corona and apply some of uh, the things we've learned uh, in the year ahead. With that said, I'll go ahead and pass the mic over to Mr. Cortez, our facilities, parks, and trails manager. Good evening, Commission, and thank you. I uh, have a couple updates for you from the Facilities, Parks, and Trails Division. First off, as, uh, as Mr. Last mentioned, our guided hikes, they've been really successful. We just really want to highlight them. Um, they've been very well attended. We've had four of them so far and 64 participants. Every single one has had a waiting list. So everybody has been you know, trying to get in on them, and we're trying to keep them updated. Hey, if you didn't make on this one, try and make on the next one. Um, as we're getting into spring, the Rangers put together a really um, awesome program. So they're going to be talking about flora and fauna. You're going to start seeing animals out there. So they're going to start talking about uh, some of the animals you might see as, you know, they're coming out of hibernation and obviously snakes and things like that. So they're going to start talking about some of that stuff. Our next one, is, as, uh, as Jason mentioned, is uh, April 27th. We have one uh, May 18th and then June 15th. So and June 15th is your, is your reptile one. So that's where we're going to start talking about some trail safety making sure you don't step in the bushes and, you know, uh, encounter a rattlesnake or something like that. So, um, so yeah, it's really been a fun program, and I'm, I'm so glad that it's, uh, it's been successful. It's, it's one of the fun things that we get to do. Next was our Corona Beautiful uh, cleanup that we did on 6th Street. This one was unique. It was our kind of first big street one that we got out on a bigger street, and we started at City Park. So we, we uh, met there. We had everybody check in, gave them some donuts, and then uh, – we had this kind of like moving um, sweeper train, kind of similar to how you see Caltrans. You know, you got the street sweeper in the back and then some trucks up front with their lights on and all these volunteers just picking up trash, cutting weeds, raking, picking up branches. And we actually made it all the way from City Park all the way down to, uh, down to Victoria Street because there's a lighted crosswalk there or one of the crosswalks that lights up. We crossed there and then came back and made it all the way back to the park. So we hit both sides. So, you know, we're little... Between both sides, that's a little over a mile worth of cleaning up that we did. So it was really fun. The volunteers uh, got to do something a little different other than just staying at one site. So we were moving the whole time, and, and it was really fun. So and it was fun for the team to get out there, too, and try something different. So um, we have another street cleanup, street cleanup coming up. At the, I believe it's November. We're going to be back on 6th Street again on the other end. So hope to see you guys out there. And then this weekend, we do have our Arbor Day event. So we'll be doing... a. Uh, some tree planting. We've got some plants that we'll actually be planting in the demonstration gardens around the City Hall parking lot as well. And uh, we'll have our mar mar March Mulch Madness. So if people want to come by and get a scoop of mulch, 
we'll hook them up with some mulch and uh, fill up the back of their truck. So come out and get your mulch and put it around your yards, especially for spring, kind of help keep those weeds down. Next was a city park pop event. Again, another super exciting event. Um, I know some of you guys were, I think oh, everybody was there, but um, it was just a great event. It was really nice to get those feedback. And again, having those models there just really kind of brought the project to life. So being able to get that feedback, being able to kind of move things around, see trees, kind of see things in scale, and especially being at the park, you could see the actual elements and then kind of look around the park and see where they were gonna fit in. So really great event, a lot of great feedback. Um, we collected over 104 surveys. So next, we'll have Rios is actively working on that, and we'll be working on some final design concepts that will be brought back uh, to next month's meeting. So we'll have some very exciting renderings to show, share with you guys. So that'll be a great, um, a great thing next month. Lastly, I know I have brought this one um, a while ago, the, the tree up at, uh, that we had for holidays. It's finally made its permanent home at Jamison Park. Um, this one will live it's not going anywhere we're going to make sure we take care of this one we've got the contractor that uh that we bought it from and did the planting they're going to maintain it for us like i've mentioned this is a, a specimen tree it's a 108 108 inch box so it's really i mean to have them see the the way they box these things and prune the roots the right way to to get it in there and then plant it and put the sand around it and the site tubes and all the you know they're it's their bread and butter this is what they do so And so in the evenings, it'll actually provide shade on that bench. So that was kind of the, the theory behind it. Um, so with that, that's all the updates I have for this month for the Facilities, Parks, and Trails Division. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Finch to go over some upcoming agenda items. Thank you, Mr. Cortez. Um, so a few items that we have coming up on the agenda for both City Council and the Commission um, are, first off, our uh, Spring Financial Workshop for City Council is going to be on March 28th. We have two updates that we're bringing back to the Council. Um, the first one is an update on the special events enhancements that the Council had requested last year. Actually, it was November of 2022. The Council provided direction to go big on events for the three-year period, and we're going to be giving some updates on some events that we have in mind for um, the year two implementation of that, along with the budgetary ask associated with it. Um, there's also an update on the urban forest program, just to provide some highlights on the work that's been done um, for year one and year two year to date, as well as a budgetary request to maintain the program moving forward. Um, and then moving on from there for the next commission meeting on April 9th, we have planned um, to bring before you the both the operations plan for City Park as well as the final design concept. I know we were originally hoping to bring that to you for this meeting in March, but there were um, the Rios team needed a little bit more time to, to um, work through the feedback that they received and really make sure that that final design concept is done right. So we'll, we're planning to bring that back to you at the next meeting. Um, and then in the May meeting for Parks and Rec Commission, we were going to be bringing an update on the CIP um, items that we have planned for fiscal year 2025. And then last but not least, um, another city council update. This is a continuation of um, updates that they've been receiving on the Performing Arts Center Feasibility Study. Um, they received the phase one update back in November, and this is the continuation of that with the phase two update on that final study. And then once we have some information to share, we'll be bringing the, that update back to the commission for, for your review. So that concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Vargas, any speaker cards or written comments for the public? No, on this no speaker cards or written comments. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take comments and questions from the commission. Commissioner Thank Munoz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of comments and a few questions. If you, if you bear with me a second. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Senior Center Current Art Association mural unveiling the mouthful. But uh, I'm hoping that it uh, really inspires our it provides a spark in our elder community, which includes me, and also inspires our Corona community to want to see more murals in our parks and our open spaces. And besides art, it would be nice to have some sculpture uh, interspersed throughout the city. So things to look forward to in the future uh, because of this mural that went in, uh, actually two now. So also, um, uh, the guided hikes, wildflower ex expedition, that really pulls my heartstrings. And I started as a scout when I was 12 years old, and and hiking really led me to learn the outdoor code and, and four things that really led to you become a better human in our society. And can you work with the community, you work with the environment, and the environment works with you also. So 
that's the best thing I can see with guided hikes. And now when they're edu educational, that's even more fantastic. So high five to you, Moses, on that. I can recall a couple years ago that you were with your family on a hike, and I was there too, just watching your family interact and having fun, and that was pretty cool. I like that. Uh, and the kids' club, uh, what type of activities are they going to have at that uh, particular event? Oh, all kinds of great things. We run the, the kids' club after school program, uh, much like our camp, where we're going to have rotations and different things to choose from. So we'll have arts and crafts. We'll have, you know, music and entertainment, uh, and of course, uh, sports and free play, and you know, just running around and being a little free there uh, as part of the the break. Right. On um, music instruments, drums, guitars, or. Um, I, I know they like rock band, but um, we could probably benefit some, from some real uh, instruments there. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> I think you know a few people that might be able to help us out. Really? Uh, on the indoor pickleball courts, I was wondering, maybe Michelle can answer this best of all, how does playing on a uh, basketball court, how do people react to that type of playability? Well, the gym is a wood surface. So a wood surface is going to be a lot faster than the uh, concrete. So um, I think when the indoor pickleball courts, when you go to a private facility, they use the same types of materials you find on outdoor courts. So it slows the ball down and your feet down with some tackiness. But it's on a wood court, so it's like playing basketball. So you're, you're safe in your footing because you're on a, a wood surface, but the ball is going to be a little faster. Unless you're me. I mean, I played with Michelle and two firemen, and I just kind of fell over against the fence, and pretty embarrassing. No, we're going to get you the right shoes. You've got to have the right shoes. That's right. the key. You can't. That good. you, you got to have the right foot support, otherwise you fall over. You did great. <laughs> you did great. At the CPRS event, I had a fantastic time. I was busy. And... Uh, Educational sessions, everything you talked about, Mr. Lass, about the event was fantastic. It's, uh, it was more than just hobnobbing, really just interacting with people, vendors, and asking them about play equipment and, and courts and uh, grass for soccer fields. And, and it's really exciting. You really learned a lot. You walked away from learning a lot of different, different items to bring back to our community. I'm hoping to see what happens now with corona when we bring all that back into our, our, our backyard. So bear with me a second. Uh, I mentioned about guided hikes being a, a staple of my life, and so I, I find that very exciting. So I can't wait to go on one of those hikes. I might be last on the waiting list, but eventually I'll be there. I'll do my own hike. The Credit Beautiful events are fantastic. I mean, you interact with the parents and, and the families and the kids. And at the last one we had here, the LDS Church was really involved that day. There must have been 40 people there from the LDS Church. So high five to that church for being very active in the community. On City Park pop-up event, uh, I had the opportunity to be there, and uh, I won't tell you which event, which uh, plan I like the best, but I like the Corona Crown the best. <laughs> so we'll see. I've heard that, that the people like number two the best, but we'll see where it goes with that. Anyway, it's the community that really has to voice their opinion and share their thoughts, because this is really their park and, and, and their activities and their dreams will be come to fruition in our new City Park. And these, and these last another 100, 110 years. So I can't wait the next uh, month to see what's going on with uh, Rios's plan. And then Jameson Park, I had an opportunity, Moses, to drive by over the weekend and see the park and uh, see the tree, and it, it's glorious. So hopefully it does survive this time, and I'm sure it will. Uh, your heart's in the right place for that. Uh, one thing I'd like to see maybe happen would be the addition of two more benches. Uh, that way you create a little space for people to interact. And the view from those benches is phenomenal, looking back uh, over the city and looking at the mountains in the background. And right now it's that they have snow, so you can really interact with the, the snow. It becomes a musical experience for me. And also maybe a QR, QR code to explain what happened with that tree, where it came from, how tall is it, how old is the tree, how it got to the park site, why it got to the park site, how it's watered, how it's maintained. And uh, that's my point there. I was wondering, too, if is there some type of plan that where you would take away some grass from around the tree or some sort of ground cover shrub that interact with that uh, type of tree? So, so the uh, Landscape Center actually recommended us putting some mulch around it and then uh, maybe removing some of those rotors from, from it to not overwater it. Right. Yeah. There's a park in Irvine that, we, that we're redoing, and the trees are totally overwatered, and the basins of the trees 
or just flooded every day. I mean, it's like three inches thick of, uh, deep of water, and the trees are drowning in it. And we really can't drown this tree. Um, and lastly, I was wondering if the commission will have an opportunity to hear more about the urban forest and receive an update on that. You know, council's getting an update. That'd be nice if we too can get an update on that. Yeah, we'd be happy to bring you an update and uh, kind of give you a, a recap of what we've done the last two years since we implemented the Urban Forest Management Plan and provide you some, some fun facts. Great. Thanks so much. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Munoz. Commissioner Wentworth. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to be at the mural grand unveiling tomorrow, so I'll be there, and, and that's, that's going to be great. Um, can you go over the details for the Arbor Day event on Saturday, the, the time, how long the event's lasting, and what people will be doing? So, yeah, so uh, the event's from 9 to 11. Uh, Check-in starts about 8.30. We're going to have some uh, snacks and some drinks for, for the guests as they get here. We're going to be planting. We're not going to have a huge tree planting event like we have in other times. So there will be some tree planting. We're also going to be planting some native plants around the demonstration gardens, uh, remulching a lot of the demonstration gardens. It's been a couple years since they've been mulched. Um, and then there'll just be some litter pickup, and then we'll have uh, about a half a dozen booths. We'll have uh, utilities there from water with water conservation. Uh, the trash and recycling folks will be there. We'll have uh, West Coast Arborists. Uh, they're going to have some saplings and some handouts and some flyers. They're going to have a flyer on new trees and some flyers on mature trees on how to maintain them and care for them. Um, and trying to think who else we're going to have on there. Um, I think that was all the vendors we're going to have, right? Yeah. So those are the vendors that we'll have there. Um, and then, like I said, we'll be kind of throughout the City Hall campus on the South Lawn doing the planting. Uh, we'll be done about 11. Okay. That's really great. That's, that's really an awesome plan for Arbor Day. I really appreciate that. I know that we've struggled in the past to kind of come up with what we were doing. So this was really good. Um, oh, and lastly, I'm sorry. Yeah, Most important thing, 915, we'll have the uh, a proclamation for the Arbor Day. Okay. So. Um, I have an appointment actually in the morning, so I'll be coming late to that, okay. but I will, I will be there probably around 1030. So, okay. but yeah, wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and I'm sorry that I wasn't able to be at the street cleanup. Um, I've been to those in the past when we do those large street cleanups and they're just fantastic. And it's really fun to be able to see like, after you do all that work, just the, the progress that you made and the changes that were done by the team there. So good job and, and thank you for that. Thanks to the community for that hard work. Um, I just wanted to know, um, will the, you know, I was kind of sad not to be involved in the CPRS. So I was just gonna ask if the commission would have that opportunity in the future that we could attend at least one day of the conference for next year if it's local in that area. I just wanted to put that out there. So I, so when I went to the one in San Diego prior and was able to go to a couple of um, the educational things, it was really helpful. And I know other commissioners go to this. So um, Anne had told us we would go to the Palm Springs, but that didn't come out you know, in here. I actually didn't know about it. It was too late. and. Uh, Commissioner Munoz offered me, you know, the free pass to get in during the vendor part, but I didn't want to go to the vendor part. I wanted to go to the education stuff for a day, so. Uh, Commissioner Wentworth, if I yeah. could chime in. One of the sessions I did set, sit in was uh, with CPRS, and you were talking about advocacy. And one of the things they do want to roll out is like a commissioner volunteer uh, legislator arm for uh, community advocates. So uh, that's going to be something they're working on this year. I don't know quite when the launch point will be, but it'll be specifically for individuals such as yourselves, you know, who sit on commission and want to speak more uh, to the parks, the programs, and um, be aware of, you know, the big things that are coming that you can be involved in. Okay, great. Yeah, there was a couple of really interesting things last year, so that was fun. All right, thank you. Um, and I wish the uh, tree at Jamison Park a long and happy life. <laughs> and Jamison Park, and that just brings up this uh, Thing. So, Mr. Lass, um, I counted 21 cars illegally parked tonight on my way to this meeting. I am wondering if we should not be renting the field like Chase Park or something to this group. They're continuously overparked. It is the street is too narrow to be parked on both sides, and they're parked illegally inside the um, parking lot. That's not counting. I just counted the street cars. They're all along the ring, and they're parked in the actual driveway to go in and out of the park on both sides. 
So not so they're illegally parked there, and um, it's just it, it, the street's too narrow for all that. So I think they may be out have outgrown the field space that they're trying to rent from the city. So um, I think that we've gone through that for a couple of seasons now. So. Yeah, that, that that's actually on a, on the facilities park trail side. So we okay. um, yeah, so we we have an organization there. They are originally allocated one field. We're working with the coach right now to actually move the rest of them to um, Citrus Park. Okay. So there's some space there. So we heard the complaints about people illegally parking and we had the rangers out there passing out warnings. So if they right. continue then we'll do tickets, but um, we're hoping we can alleviate that overflow over to Citrus Park. Yeah, we don't want to ticket them. Because, yeah. you know, ultimately they rented the space. Yeah. And, but they did this all last year. Yeah. And they did it in the fall. So every time I drive past there on my way anywhere in the evening, they have way too many cars. Okay. So their group is, it's, they have more people than they, they need way more parking than, yeah. than what we have at that park. That's, and that's not their fault. No. They have so, the, yeah. So the plan is to, to yeah. get them over, to get that other two additional teams over okay. to Citrus. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is we had um, an email come to us as a commission from a resident uh, requesting that we review the dog policy at uh, Butterfield. And this resident specifically um, brought up the challenges that come with allowing unneutered dogs into a dog park. Um, so I was hoping that you could bring that back to the commission next month for policy update and changes because it seems like a, something that we should be talking about and I wasn't aware of. Yes, so we did see the email um, and we responded to the resident. We have forwarded that information over to Animal Control to evaluate that as well because typically those types of policies fall under that, their purview, but we are continuing those discussions with them and we can give you an update on where that's going. Why would Animal Control have anything to do with a, the with a park policy? It would be a spay and neuter policy, which falls under their umbrella, so. But we're only, it's kind of the, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. So I guess what I'm asking is, um, it's kind of the same thing as, as the park policies where you might put up a no skateboarding on the, you know, on the playground area. It seems to me it's that same kind of policy. So um, I guess I would think it's not really under animal control, it's more under the fact that we as a commission and a community haven't really thoroughly thought through the dog park policy at the park. So um, that's kind of where I was going with that. Okay. I, I was kind of, that, that to me sounds like a little bit of like, um, I, I appreciate that there ha they could have some input to us, but I also feel like this resident brought a couple more issues there. So I feel like in, in that spirit of trying to review the policy that really does fall under parks and it's not really animal control. We can get some guidance from our legal department on which department should be the appropriate one. We had thought that animal control would be the best um, fit for that, but based on your comments, we can reach out to legal and get some additional guidance from okay. them. Okay, I mean, all right. It seems that to me that time is more of the essence since we're moving into spring and I can appreciate the resident's concern about unneutered animals being allowed in our dog parks, period, just to have that rule that you don't have unneutered dogs in a dog park. Um, and comparatively, what does that look like in other parks? So I would like the staff to give us that information from other parks rather than take the resident's word that, you know, this park has that and this park, you know. So I don't know because I haven't been to the other parks, but I would like the staff to make sure that it's consistent, and if this seems like something that other cities are habitually doing, that it's safer to have a dog park with the posted rules that unneutered dogs not enter the dog park, then that seems like something that we should adopt or at least talk about adopting. So that's kind of why I was gonna go with that. So thanks, okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, I know that we had, we had another email come through from a resident. Um, questioning uh, the, the safety and bathroom policy at the Circle City Center. And I was pleased to see that you responded and the staff responded, but if you could keep us updated if there was any new policy changes or you have more recommendations for keeping that area safe when the, the kids are there, um, that would be great. I would appreciate that. So, and that concludes my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Wentworth.
Vice Chair Bass. Thank you for um, this month's community service report. I love to see how busy the guided hikes have been. So that's amazing work. Um, and then actually on the Corona Beautiful uh, cleanup, I see one of uh, my students in there. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and I was looking, oh, so I think I might've asked this before and I was looking at the website. Is there a certain, Okay, so volunteers need to be at least 14 years old to not have a parent present, but if they do have a parent present, then they can be younger for the com community cleanup. Yeah, we just don't want them dropping off a, a younger child and with no parental guidance and we lose a kid or something, especially being on the streets, so. Gotcha, okay. Um, and then, oh, okay, I'm for the Jameson Park tree, is there by chance some kind of time-lapse video of that? Because that would have been really cool. No, I can see if they took photos. I know we took photos when we, um, when we put it, we brought it to City Hall, but I don't know if they got any photos when they were planting it. I can ask the contractor if they took any, because sometimes they do put them up on their website as, you know, just to, examples of work they've done. So, but that would be kind of cool to have, to have a time-lapse of it getting craned in and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for next year. Um, that was all the comments I had. Thank you so much for the report. Thank you, Vice Chair Bass. <clears throat> Just a couple from myself. Okay, kids' night out. I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it, but um, this is a parent involvement or literally the, the parents can go away and enjoy their night. It's in. just as much kids' night out as it is parents' night out. So um, if you sign up for that program, um, the kids, um, you can drop them off at the Circle City Center. We have a full fun night uh, planned. You know, we'll have pizza, games, all kinds of activities. They basically get, you know, free run of the Circle City Center, which is kind of unique and special. Um, and they can do, you know, dodgeball and all kinds of great activities. And uh, parents can just hop out across the street. We have some great, you know, restaurants and dining and supporting our local uh, businesses there. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, really. Um, in terms of the Arbor Day uh, celebration, what guided our decision to bring it here instead of one of the parks like it was previously? So we did Citrus Park the last couple of years. Um, we've pretty much filled that park with trees. And then we wanted to go to a sports park, but it makes it really challenging since we do hold it on a Saturday. That's the busiest day for the sports parks. We got all the leagues and soccer groups there. So it got a little tricky trying to figure out how we could plant trees when, you know, we got soccer games and baseball, go baseball games going on. So, like, we looked for another bigger campus that could accommodate something like this, and we came up with City Hall. So next year we'll come up with a different location based on scheduling and events going on. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, and the drop-in pickleball, how many courts are there? Is it, like, organized play, or is it just kind of come and do your thing? Well, it's a bit of a, um, it's a, a new program for us, so we're kind of piloting it. Um, so we believe we have capacity for up to four courts. We're going to do launch day with three, just so we have good margins of play to kind of, um, we're going to be doing a lot of observation, watching. Uh, the pickleball community is very vocal uh, about the preferential uh, courts. Um, so we want to listen, and we're going to do some adjustment as the weeks go on to kind of fine tune that. So optimally, we'd like to be running four courts, um, but we're going to start in our safe buffer zone there just to make sure run everything's running smoothly. Um, like I said, you know, staff are um, th even this week doing, you know, testing with the lining, uh, the net, the equipment to make sure everything uh, is looking right. We're also going to have uh, posted uh, pickleball etiquette kit and rules uh, there's like a certain like code system you do with like face up and face down paddles and all that i've um, been learning a whole lot through this process it's great and it's so wonderful too because the community tells us what they like and what they're seeing and what works and uh, we're just trying to accommodate the best we can we found some time that works uh, so we can get them in um, for a little bit of indoor play are the corona pickleball folks involved with this the larry and ray Yes, we're going to be um, doing um, our, our big uh, social media push uh, this week, as well as posting signage up at their location. And some of those players have been in contact with us. Great. Thank you. And the CPRS conference, that looks like a really good time. That park is, is gorgeous. I love it. Uh, what would you say your biggest takeaways were? And I'll ask my fellow commissioner, Mr. Munoz and Mr. Lass, what your biggest takeaways from that conference were as it relates to how it applies here. 
You weren't expecting a, a quiz, were you? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I'm getting put on the spot. Um, so for for me, and I've been attending CPRS for years. I, I, I've you know been active on the board. I was even volunteering for the planning committee uh, for this event. Um, it, as a recreation professional, it just gives me a real chance to kind of uh, recharge my batteries, to reconnect uh, with different networks. Um, but most importantly, I think it um, it kind of uh, sparks my ideas and my creativity, and it reminds me that we do have an evolving field and things change over time. And you know, I've been doing this for 20 years and I still get surprised when I go to conference with what other communities are doing, you know, what new products are happening um, and, you know, what I'm even capable of. So um, it's a it's a real great program. Um, it's a real great group of individuals. Um, and it's, it's just really exciting for me. And I, I think I saw a post today that um, the opposite of trigger is glimmer. So when uh, you, there's glimmers, these are little moments that inspire you. So, you know, look around in life for those. And Press is definitely the place for that. Awesome. I agree with everything you said, but I'll add more to that. That for the last 45 years I've been doing this, really. But um, it's been exciting every time I go to a, a CPRS meeting locally in Orange County or anywhere you go to. The spirit behind the recreation people is amazing. You walk away feeling as though you're, you're just holding on to batteries, you know, and it's really, it, it just inspires you to want to go back to work and share those thoughts and what you gain from those educational seminars. And you do walk away seeing people uh, the recreation people interacting and constantly wanting to grow in, in their space, in, in their field. And it's amazing that they're really in charge of our kids. And so when they want to grow, they want to inspire, and they want to be inspired by people who are their mentors. And that and that's, goes back to the kids in our community. So what I'm saying is that our kids are getting the benefit of having CPRS around, either locally or non-locally, too. So I hope, I pray that we get a chance to go as a commission uh, my friend who's a director in Tustin, he sent his whole commission for one reason, to learn and see what's going on in other, other, other communities. That's the way they bring that back to Tustin, and they become better, bigger and better. That's our challenge, to be better in Tustin if you can. <laughs> I know we can. So that's what I get from CPRS. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, the guided hikes, thrilled to hear that they're super popular. That's awesome. And I'm wondering, based on the fact that they are frequently waitlisted. Is this something you think maybe we could make more regular and expand and just, is there a bandwidth to do such a thing? Do we add an additional ranger and maybe, you know, allow instead of, you know, our cutoff at 20 or 25, do we expand it to 30 folks? So, you know, see if we can maybe accommodate more folks on those trips. Awesome, thank you. Um, something for the, the cleanups, um, kind of an, along the lines of like a time lapse for the tree would be like a before and after would be kind of cool to see, you know, after, uh, especially like a, like a street cleanup like that where yeah. there's a big difference before and after. Yeah, it was fun. We, we like, so we made it all the way down the street or, you know, almost a mile round trip and, and we did. We filled up the truck with trash, leaves, branches, weeds, I mean, yeah, I mean, those on the street. The photographic evidence just speaks volumes of, yeah. of the impact. So that'd be something to be cool to maybe look towards. Uh, wanted to come up briefly on what Commissioner Wentworth brought up about the spay and neuter policy. And I totally welcome the, you know, the animal control folks as, as a subject matter expert uh, to offer their input. But also, if this is something that is looked at and adopted by other cities. So I think that's where this body um, to Commissioner Wentworth's point, could weigh in and offer us some, you know, some insights as to what are other cities doing with this sort of thing, and are they also looking to their their animal control or police departments to to guide those policies, or how do they how do they drive these policies? Um, would be helpful to know. Let's see, uh, tree the the cypress tree. I love it. I uh, I really do wish it well. Um, if you need some mulch, I've got an idea where you could probably get some uh, this coming weekend. Unfortunately, I won't be able to come this weekend. I will be traveling out of state, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I trust it will be a wonderful event. Uh, and, and to uh, Commissioner Munoz's point, yeah, anything that is going to come before the council related to us, it would be great to get a, get a briefing on it before it does go there as well. So that concludes my comments. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the report. Okay, moving on. Next item, Sheridan Park Improvements. This is exciting. Uh, it'll be a report by Mr. Cortez, Ms. Nguyen, and Ms. Bustos. Take it away. 
Thank you, Commission. Yeah, we have a very exciting update for you guys on Sheridan Park. Um, so this is going to be a larger project, a large project that encompasses kind of like a three-phase approach to the playground. Um, it was we're blessed to be able to get um, some grant funding for this. So this is even a, a better win, and this community really could use it. So it's an older playground um, and an older park. So this will be a really, really fun project. And uh, easy. Today's ask is going to be that you guys provide us feedback on three design options that um, you'll hear in just a moment. So I don't want to take their thunder away. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Lynn. And then afterwards, after you see all the different slides, uh, we'll be available to answer any questions or take any feedback or ideas that you guys have that we could then relay back to our design team. Thank you, Moses. That was a great introduction to Sheridan Park. Uh, so quick overview of this project, uh, Sheridan Park is located in an area that is considered a low income and uh, disadvantaged, meaning that they're lacking the economic, health, and environmental aspects. So the city really took the opportunity and saw this park and is really seeing the opportunity to transform this park into a safe place for the kids, families, adults, and anybody to come and enjoy themselves and enjoy the park and really utilize the park to its fullest. Um, we decided to make this park into a solar system theme park and our message across is shoot for the stars. So that one's really cool. Uh, what's included in the park is an all-inclusive playground with a new swing set, rubberized material flooring, shade structures, and a bit of educa ed educational pieces as well. So like what Moses, sorry, what Mr. Cortez said, <laughs> um, this project is funded entirely by the Community Development Block Grant, and this supports the community development activities to build stronger and more resilient communities. Uh, some of these projects that this fund has done before are splash pads, um, senior centers, and other community facilities as well. And our sole pur purpose of this project is to really incorporate the accessibility and inclusivity and also incorporate fun aspects to the playground. What's really important for us is that we really want to incorporate the community's feedback, especially the residents' wants and needs. Um, uh, the residents around the Sheridan Park, we really want to incorporate their feedback. So we plan to do some sort of public outreach to get their feedback and um, their comments as well. Uh, our next steps is to narrow down to one vendor and for you to give us feedback on uh, several of the vendors' renderings that will be presented in the next slides. And also we're going to be incorporating the feedback that you will bring to us in our final design. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Bustos to show us some renderings. And um, I do want to preface that these are just renderings and um, conceptual designs. These aren't the final design of the Sheridan Park or anything else. We just wanted to show you the possibilities and the opportunities that these vendors can do for us on this project. Okay. So thank you, Lynn. Um, it is with great privilege and excitement to showcase three different vendors' unique renderings for the solar system theme project here at the Sheridan um, Improvement Project. So for vendor one, this is an inclusive design, has numerous play opportunities for children with all abilities, with 12 elevated play components and 11 ground level components. The renderings offer several different custom play features and equipment with a 24 laser cut steel post topper, a sun post topper, a 42 angled laser cut roof, a cloud cascade climber, solar system sign panel displaying the solar system, a mission control panel, along with the sh stars shaped wobbled uh, pods, which children can jump from pod to pod. The structure has integrated shade, which is going to be um, on connected to the actual play structures, a double swoosh slide, a whoosh winter slide, the play area allows children to roam freely, having accessible features throughout the space, 
children can venture out from the play structure onto the four we saw, AKA space vehicle, to jet across the sky. They can also hop on the five arch swing set to reach for the stars. And that is vendor one, again. For vendor two, it has two play structures, one for the older youth and one for the littles. A Elted Guide Signature Inclusive Play Attraction, so kids in mobility devices can ride along as well. A Generational Swing, parents and tots can swing together. A Therapeutic Swing, kids that require extra support can swing with their friends or a family member. A Dome Climber, with planet-like spheres to climb on. Custom Roof Panel, Educational planets and spaceship panels, and an integrated sh shade that will also be connected um, onto the play structures. So for vendor three is one large main play structure, a structure entrance and sensory ramp. Custom toppers for the deck will represent the various planets and solar system. A sleek panel, the sleek panel will have unique solar system uh, panels that will feature different planets and educational pieces to incorporate the theme. The custom educational pan panels having, have two incorporated educational um, themes that we can also incorporate, like a QR code, so that we can you know, have more information to provide for students to learn and keep on learning as well. Main, a main tower structure, the main tower structure will be positioned um, on the earth. So on this particular uh, rendering, we have uh, the rubber surfacing and it has the details of the earth and the Mars and the, you know, the Saturn as well. So on this play structure, the large play structure will be over the earth so that students or children, family members can look up and or look down onto the earth. So that was a, a very unique piece. There is a GFR C moon that will represent the Earth's moon, which you can see in the uh, rendering. Um, there's also uh, a rubber surfacing graphic, which is also on the rubber surfacing, where the lunar rover is landed on Mars. So it gives a, ch a child the experience of riding on, on, or riding and landing on Mars. And then there's also the one piece of Saturn, which is in the actual um, surfacing as well, and it shows the different moons um, along with all of the planets or the planets that are shown in this actual uh, rendering. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Moses. Thank you. Is it working? Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you Caroline and Lynn. Um, so with that, that was the, um, three, the three options that we wanted to show you. Again, these were kind of high level ones, kind of that massing plan that we've kind of you know, talked about in the past. Just wanted to kind of talk about what, what theme you like, the kind of layout you like, and then after that we can go back. We will do some public outreach um, and get their feedback. But really we just wanted to kind of see what direction you wanted us to go in, and then we will go back out to the public and and really refine it, and then afterwards we will come back to you and show you what um, the final renderings look like. But with that, we'll turn it over to you guys with any questions you have for us or any feedback you have. We'll gladly take any feedback, and again, take this back to our design team. Thank you very much, Mr. Cortez um, and, uh, and staff. I appreciate the presentation. Uh, just a point of clarity in, in the ask, and we are picking a vendor, not a design, um, and then after this, the community will be presented with multiple variations of designs from said vendor? Correct. So these, uh, so this is three options from three different vendors. So if you pick one of those kind of overall design themes, we'll go back with any feedback we get from you as well as any feedback we get from our community, have them refine that. You know, any, maybe we want to add a, you know, a panel here or you know, add another climber over here or maybe reposition it just a little bit this way just to kind of make sure we get the most function out of it and make sure that we're building something that the community really wants. And then we would come back with that. So that's what we're looking for today. Thank you very much. Will there be a community vote piece of this? There will be. So that's what the community outreach will be, is to get the community uh, feedback and vote on it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome 
feedback and comments and questions from my colleagues. Start with Mr. Munoz. Thank you. Uh, great presentation by Mr. Cortez, Ms. Bustos, and Ms. Wynn. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to hear about the feedback from the community. Once again, they're the key to the, the success of our, our park sites. Their needs and wants are, are needed. Uh, what was the budget on these on these uh, designs? Carolyn, you had the overall budget, right? We were budgeted um, seven hundred thousand, but when we break it down, it's less than that. With you have to consider soft costs and demo and right. construction as well. So about half a million dollars, maybe five hundred thousand, give or take it. So, but that'll include the surfacing, um, the straight structure, and the playground itself. Okay. So working uh, into vendor one, which uh, at first you took, I took a first glance Saturday. And all three designs, and you get reactions to those design layouts just by the pictures and the renderings. And understand the renderings are just, that's all they are, renderings, but uh, possibilities. Um, my third question, I guess, would be, or second question would be, do they all meet CPS stand, CPSC standards? We did include that, and we also wanted to make sure that. So this will be an inclusive playground. So it'll be our four. Uh, this will be our first. Fully inclusive playground, okay. so yes, it'll meet all those those uh, criteria. Okay. And the fourth, third, or fourth question will be: Do they are they all IPEMA IPEMA certified? So that we haven't gotten into the details of that yet. So, but we will obviously. There's a lot of criteria that is going to be in the block grant that we'll have to include in that scope of work. Right. So we'll include that all those items as well. Okay. And the age group, I guess, for each one is two to five and five to twelve. Okay. Correct. Um, one thing I noticed on some of the uh, playgrounds uh, was that it appears to me that the guardrails could use more playful panels on those. Okay. Speak to the kids, and uh, as kids are even sitting waiting for the turn to go down a slide, they could be playing on a play piece. And I saw on vendor two, three, but I'll get that in a second, they have a lot of panels all over the place, and that was kind of exciting to see that. Um, on vendor one, it appears to me to be more fully, it fully captures the uh, space theme on the safety surface. That's kind of the scene of stars and Saturn and other elements of the, our solar system. And is the surfacing going to be black or is that blue on vendor number one? So on there, they, they show it as, it comes out as, as a black, but it's gray. But again, we'll look at all those options um, once we get into it, you know, we can put the, you know, usually they'll put the different colors in the rubber right. to kind of lighten it up or mix it. So we'll look at those different colors as well because okay. black is, you know, it's going to get really hot. Yeah, so. it'll be too hot to have black. And then on vendor number two, uh, well, on the rendering number two, could you go to rendering number two, please? Uh, not vendor two, but rendering two. I'm sorry. Vendor one, rendering two. That one there. Uh, I guess CPSC standard would be the dimension between the play pieces and all. It's pretty critical, and that looks pretty congested. I want to make sure that we are aware of that. Uh, I know we are. I just want to make sure that we adhere to that CPSC standard. And then vendor two, rendering one. Oh, sorry. That looks like a lot of blue, and like the ocean. It might be kind of monotone color. I'm, I'm sure we're going to explore multiple colors throughout the overall design. And this design here kind of looks like very sporadic. It just kind of places one over here and one over there, and the third one over here, and a fourth element over here. There should be some sort of tie in to these, kind of bring in that in inclusivity together. And here would be a good idea to have, I think, the uh, idea of more panels on the guardrails. And then uh, vendor number three, if I may. I like the idea that they have the lunar lander or Mars lander. That's kind of exciting. One thing I, th I saw again was just too much the color, I guess it would be uh, gold or mustard color. It just seems to be too monotone there, too. Some more, some more playful designs going into the playability of the flu fluidity of the actual play surface would be kind of nice to see. Uh, I think also, too, the overhead structure on the bottom side there would be kind of nice to have some sort of 
um, mural on the bottom. If you look at vendor, rendering number three, I guess it is, on vendor three. Uh, you can see there for sure that that, that underside belly there would be kind of nice to have some sort of artistic piece there. Uh, kind of take advantage of the moments and the place and the space or kids looking up, they see uh, that helping to embellish the play, the play field. And lastly, I think the overhead structures seem to be too, too large. They seem to be taking over the space itself. Let's go to rendering four. All right, next one. Ah. That one there, yeah. Seeing again, the overhead structure seems to be too, too massive. I was wondering if they break it up if possible and create some movement. They might want to. They might want to think about moving this, the uh, squares apart. So is that really one straight row? It could be undulating of sorts, maybe. I don't know. It's, where the thought we're thinking about. Uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you. The shade structures for that area are for the swing set. So um, that area is for the swing set, and there's one designated area for the playground. So we'll take those comments into consideration. Thank you. Commissioner Munoz, did you have an inclination towards any of the uh, any one of the vendors? Originally, I thought number one was nice, and then I saw I got more closely on the screen here with number three, and it had addressed all the play panels on the guardrails. I like that. It's really, it, it gives the kid a, a child a chance to play everywhere on, on the play piece, not just waiting in line, not just swinging, not just slides, but also the guardrails. We were in San Diego on, on Sunday with my grandson, and at that park there, they spent probably a million dollars on their play equipment there. It was amazing. But the kids are doing one thing only, sliding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so slides are just like 10 feet wide by 30 foot long, and the kids are there by 90% of the kids were just there sliding, having fun, laughing, and sharing. It was all different age groups of kids, you know, two to five, five to 10. It was kind of neat seeing that. But half a million dollars, all you there wanted to slide on the slide, that was it. Forget the swings, forget everything else. Yep. So slides have their way of having fun. Awesome, thank you. So the, the slight edge to three for you. Yes. Thank you. With some Mr. massaging. Since we have the vendor three rendering page up, just let me clarify, the um, white portion is shade over the swing set. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then um, that vendor three has one slide or two slides? This is really, this is a really difficult way to look at these, this play equipment. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one slide. It looks like two slides, but then when I look at it on my, on the smaller thing, I can't tell. So is two it two slides? slides? It's two okay. Slides. It's two slides. Okay. Um, thank you. And then, so vendor one has, in comparison, it's one slide. Am I just, I want to make sure I'm not missing what's going on here. That's correct. One slide. One slide. Oh, no, there's two oh, slides. Got the two there's two slides. Yeah. Okay, there's a smaller slide and a larger slide. Okay, so it's the same amount of slides. Got it. Okay. Um, all right, well, with vendor one, I would say that um, I think that they captured the theme more equitably with the solar system. I think that um, their play equipment and the colors that they're using and how they decided to design the rubberized material uh, makes a lot of sense. It's very pleasing to the eye. I like that they have the large shade structure over the playground. Um, by comparison to Vendor 3, I think they have an inadequate shade structure over the playground. So um, there's that. I, yeah, I'm not, I think that uh, Commissioner Munoz's point about having the play panels in Vendor 1 be more um, interactive with the kids that where they're, they're spacing them, which is looks like before both slides. It would make sense instead of just guardrails to have more play panels, and I would agree with that. I think those would, would be the two improvements I would make to vendor one, and I'm leaning towards vendor one um, as, as what I would recommend. Um, vendor two, I think by comparison, 
it's, it's kind of lackluster. Um, and I don't think the um, older kids' play equipment looks very in, inviting. I don't see enough there to do. Um, again, I prefer the busyness on vendor one. I know you said they might be a little bit too close together, but I kind of think about you know, how the kids use the play equipment. And um, I liked how vendor one had things going on, whereas this one just, it just looks like, based on the renderings, unless you guys have better renderings, it doesn't look like there's much going on. There's no play panels. It looks like ramp, a ramp and a ramp and a ramp. And is there a large slide to the older's playground, or is it a small slide? It looks like a small slide from... It's a small slide. It's a very small slide. Okay. So I would take this one off the list because I don't think that this meets the needs of the kids that are in your play group, you know, from 6 to 12, 7 to 12. Um, I don't think that, I don't think this design really does it. I don't think it captures it. So I would take that. That's why I would take that one off the list completely. And then vendor three is... It's, it's interesting. Um, I don't like the color scheme at all. I don't like the rubberized surfacing, the way they did that. I think that they, they could have, for solar system, it kind of is a little heavy on the gold and the purple and then the shooting stars. It's, I don't know, it, it doesn't come together as well for me as vendor one, but my thing is, I do like the shade. They, so they're investing the shade structure over the swing set. And I don't think the shade structure over the actual playground is quite adequate enough. I think it's, you can see in the thing, it's tipped. And I think with the sun coming, I think it's going to offer very little shade, um, actually, in reality, to uh, the play equipment. So I don't know that that would be changed. I, my leaning is vendor one instead of vendor three uh, with the modifications that uh, Commissioner Munoz pointed out. I do like the play equipment on vendor three, but um, only because of the shade. I'm not sure that the swings need to make. Well, I don't, I, it's hard to tell what the swing equipment, what, there's no rendering for that. It's just, there's no picture of that, is there? So if I remember this one correctly, if you looked under the shade structure, and Caroline, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think this one included um, a couple of regular swings, traditional swings. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked them to put a baby swing in there, and then it had two of the ADA swings um, on the uh, far end. Okay, okay. Well, I like that. I think that, I think that having kids love to swing, and they love to be on the slides. So um, I like the slides on this one as well. So the those two, you know, those are big attractions that catch your eye. And I do like the shade over the uh, swing set. Um, that would be my suggestion, would just be um, a more encompassing set shade over the play structure. Okay. And your, But your number one choice is vendor one, correct? Um, yeah, it's, it's vendor one. Okay. Thank you very much. Did you have an additional comment, Mr. Munoz? I, I do. Um, caught me off guard by picking my choice. I really liked, again, uh, Number one, just it hit you instantaneously that it looked nice. Again, the colors were, were very exciting, and as, as uh, Michelle talked about, it just all kind of pulled together, very nice colors and all. Whereas this one here, number three, uh, the color of the gold is just too much. You know, a, they could change it again, like I mentioned, some more fluidity going on with the purples and things. The nice contrasting colors. But I do like the play, the play piece here. I like the fact that it has slides, two slides or more, and then again, the panels. So if number one can have some sort of uh, more interaction there, too, I mean, it'd be nice to have all that. So I do like one. Uh, quick question. It, when the vendor produces multiple options for the community, would different color schemes be a part of those options? Yeah, so we're, at, kind of, we're looking just for direction on design, so like which design really fits or you think flows the best. Um, details of like colors and surfacing stuff, if we want to change add another color to the surface, we can do those things. So so really kind of overall design and function is what we're looking for today. Thank you. And Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Bass. My um, favorite vendor design is number three. I really love how it's spaced out a bit and how they've 
um, made the um, ground a bit interactive. I also feel like um, they have the education pieces and components obvious. I feel like it's very, um, there's room, lots of room for imagination and play there. Um, when I was looking at the shade with the, the shade over the swings, the moon or whatever that is, <laughs> the big circle under that pole, it made me think about those big swing type of structures where the kids can like go around in circles. So I don't know if um, that gives us more options for the swing, um, swing play by having that shade. Um, and yeah, I think the design, the, the design on vendor number three is my favorite, just seeing like the creativeness in it. Um, I've, I've, yeah, we talked about the coloring, maybe that could change a bit. Um, but I think, that's, I think that's all I have to say. All set? So that was um, an edge to three for you. All right. It's down to me. Here we go. We got two for, two for three and one for one. You were still at three, right, Mr. Munoz? With modifications. Okay. All right. And I like three, but with modifications. I don't like that. I don't think that disc offers the appropriate amount of shade for the play structure, and that would call that would mean that the play structure would change a lot. So that was my concern. I liked the shade in one because it really covered the play structure. And I could see three put their money over the swing set, but mm. I'm like, I'm mm. torn. I hear that. Yeah, no, I, um, I really went back and forth between one and three, and I solicited some expert feedback from a five-year-old daughter. <laughs> um, she liked three because there's a lot of pink, and she liked the, the exciting tall slides. Uh, which I agree with. I think that's cool. And the fact there's two right at the top there, uh, and they're and they're they're two tall slides. I like that. Um, but kind of going back to one, I'm just going to kind of step through what I liked um, and maybe thought could be improved about each. So vendor one, uh, I liked it that there's a lot of kinetic things to do. That's big for me with, with with little ones. That there's stuff on the ground level for them to run and and bounce around with and spin on or rock on or swing on or climb. I like that. I like that there's a lot to do that moves. I think that that's, that's an, a necessary element for our parks. Um, I think overall theming and cohesion, I think they did a really good job of, of bringing it all together. Um, any of them that have these graphics built into the rubberized surface, uh, I have to wonder about long-term maintenance. Does that add complexities to maintenance because you've now got different colors to work with? How does that work? So the key to protecting that surfacing is to uh, power wash it annually or biannually and seal it. Um, up front, the cost, there's a little, sometimes a little bit of variation depending on the color and the demand for it. Um, but there's not a huge, a huge cost in it. Really, the key comes down to just the maintenance on it to, to protect it. So when we go to, if there's a damaged spot in the red circle or in the yellow star, we're going to fix it with yellow. We're going to yeah, match it. Was, yeah. um, most of these manufacturers have patch kits you can buy. Um, so it comes with, you know, like a 10-pound bag or whatever, and you mix it up and trowel it in. So we would get, you know, if it's black, black, red, red. So we just match it. And obviously, initially, it's going to be a little bit brighter until it fades in. You know, you can see the patch. It might stand out a little bit. But, uh, again, the biggest thing we can do to protect this is just um, – power washing it and sealing it biennially. Okay, thank you. Um, I also love the shade and the fact that it's large and covering the, the, the principal play structure. Um, like it's broken up. We've got some other playgrounds that have similar uh, shade structures and they, they work well and they hold up over time. Uh, I like that. I like there's lots, there's lots of different things to climb, lots of ways to get up to the top. I think that's neat. Uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Munoz that there could be some more stuff to do once you get up there right, as you're queuing up, so to speak, or just going up there and playing with those things and checking it out and don't go down the slide. Uh, but there's, there's something to go up there and, and do. Um, what I think could be improved is it's not clear to me, is there, which sec, is there a, a, at least from this rendering, it's not clear to me if there's like a tot, like the, the two-year-old to five-year-old, which section would that be here? It's all included in one structure. So for this one, it would be 
uh, for all ages. I for guess like, I'm missing the steps up as opposed to climbing up. something up. Let's see. I think it's on. Like, how do you get up to the slide with steps as opposed to climbing something? Okay, maybe I see something there. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so those are my notes on one, vendor one. Vendor two, um, not getting a lot of love here tonight, but I do think it does have some pros. Uh, I like the accessible ride feature. I think that's kind of neat. Um, I like the fact that it's got a lot of shade uh, over everything. You know, there's, there's shade over, there's two big shade structures, then there's the, the two in the middle that add some additional shade. I like that. Um, I like that there's some variance to the, to the swing types. Uh, and now that you said that about three, I also like that about three. Um, I like the fact that there is kind of a, a Uh, disunified in general and not as much to interact with in general right there's a lot of there's a lot of metal and and railings and but that's kind of it right uh, outside of the primary play elements there's not not a lot going on um, so that's vendor two vendor three the exciting slides I think it's cool I think that they 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 the moon buggy is neat. I think that reinforces the theme in general. The theme is pretty good. Um, I agree about the, the shade. I'm, I'm torn on the shade a little bit because it is a unique thing to have shade over swings, which we don't really have in many of our parks, and that could be a draw to this park for someone who wants to swing under shade, um, that we don't offer it at most parks. It's usually right in the brutal sun. You're looking into the sun or, or something like that. Um, I like the fact that there's a baby swing in this one. I think that that's... That's needed, you know, in anywhere we, we put swings. Um, so whether it's, it's neat or not, I'm, I'm kind of torn, um, but I do think that the shade over the primary play structure, um, you know, Commissioner Munoz mentioned it is kind of overpowering. Maybe it's too high, but I think it's too narrow. Like it's the, the diameter of it isn't big enough to, to be effective there um, in terms of adding actual shade. The other thing that we've done on some of these, and I know this rendering doesn't, doesn't show it, but um, once we get into actually going into full design, they'll typically face that, what, you know, whichever way the park's oriented. For us, it's going to be south-facing to cast the shade onto the playground. So they'll, mm. they'll, they'll angle it to cast that, that shadow. So Makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, how wide is that? Sorry to interrupt. How, yeah. like, that's the other thing is it looks narrow in these renderings. That's why I said it seems kind of inadequate. I, I like the play equipment here, but we have been asked by the residents to have enough shade over the play equipment. And I like the shade over the, over the swings. It's just, is there a way to, yeah. that we can know or see better yeah. on the shade for the play equipment? It's, just, it's really the kid standing there and then it's tipped. It looks yeah. like it's not going to provide really shade for about two hours out of the whole day. It doesn't, it's like hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, again, these were some really high-level renderings that they put together for us uh, without going to a full design. If three was the consensus overall, then we could go back to them and ask them to refine these a little more. Obviously, we're going to do some public outreach. Um, I know shade was one of the things that we said was going to be a standard at our playgrounds, so we want to make sure if we're going to build a shade structure that it's going to actually provide the adequate shade. So um, I'm sure Caroline and Lynn could work with the vendors and uh, – get some refinements, some additional information from them on the actual size and width of it, um, and come back to you guys with that information as we get further into this. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Munoz about the shade over the swings. If we're going to do that, I, it would be nice to see it done in maybe a more interesting way, you know, maybe panelized or something like that, to add, some, add some airflow gaps, something like that. Um, but I, I like the concept because it's unique in, in the park system. Um, general feedback for, for all of them, um, shade, shade, shade. I mean, we've, we've talked about this a million times, and I don't see any shade for caretakers in any of these if that's part of the scope, or are we just talking about the play area proper? Um, but you know, shade, for, shade for folks watching is, is a big thing, too, for me. Um, cardinal direction of slides. 
you know, we want them to not be facing the sun because the slides get hot when they face the sun. And I know that's not really depicted here, but when we go to the final design, I think that's something to consider. Um, da, 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 I asked about that. Um, and to Commissioner Wentworth's point about being able to compare the, um, the attributes of them, they all kind of take a different spin on how they present their renderings, right, the different vendors. But if, there's, if there was a, like a consistent plan view, at least between them, like throw the renderings in for sure, but if there was something that was kind of like, oh, okay, that's the slide, that's that element, that's el that element, just from a, doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be colorful, it could be line art, right, just to, just a plan view, just to make it easier to compare between them element for element wise, that would be helpful in, in the future for, because I know we're gonna be doing this a few more times, which is great. Um, and with that, I think my edge with four of us here uh, is, is for one, uh, but it's three is a very, very close second for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I would say exactly the same thing, is that it's just the shade is kind of throwing it, so I don't know. But I like three, too, so either, both of them are really good. Okay. Yeah, and if, and if we went with three, I would, I would encourage them to come back with maybe a different color palette, for sure. Sorry about that. We can find ways to incorporate, as you mentioned, elements that you like from both. So um, the large shade for item one or vendor one with the color scheme um, and then some of the more interactive panels. So that's definitely something that we can request from the vendor. They are willing to make some changes as long as it fits within our budget scope. So so we'll, we'll communicate those uh, adjustments and then go out for some additional public outreach. I was wondering, as a final point, on that shade structure number three, if they could do it multi-leveled. We could definitely ask them if they can. Yeah, that might change the, that, yeah. It change the feel of it all and cast different shadow patterns and all, too. Mm -hmm. So I might address okay. that. And um, one more thing, Chair Olson, to your point about um, shade for the caretakers. So I think actually having shade structures, that would be an additional budgetary asset isn't built into the project, but we can accommodate the shade uh, for the caretakers with tree plantings. That's something that we are looking to do as we do more tree plantings within the parks is make sure that we're putting those around some of the seating areas. It will take a little bit of time for those to grow in, but um, over time it will provide that needed shade. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I one of the things about the swing shade that I like is that is shade for the caretaker too, right? Because the kids need to be pushed. Um, trust me, <laughs> a lot for hours at a time. Um, so I mean, for, for my money, if it was one or three, I would be happy if they, if they incorporated the uh, commission's feedback um, and whichever one was more amenable to meeting the scope and budget based on our feedback, I would be happy with either one or three personally. Okay, thank you. That gives us any other time. comments from thank my colleagues on that. Okay. Did right. we fulfill the ask? Yes. It gave us the direction we needed to uh, move forward with getting out uh, working with the vendor one and vendor three, and we'll go back out to the community. Fantastic. All right. So we'll move on to the final item: commission members' reports and comments. I will start with Commissioner Munoz. All right. Thank you. Um, a couple of things I want to add is that uh, I think Parks and Recreation is awesome. And I also want to congratulate somebody for being, I, I, mean, I we didn't know anything that was happening until like a couple of days ago. So can you speak to that, Mr. Lass, about, is that too much too soon or what? Am I embarrassing somebody? <laughs> I, I see a smile over there, so not embarrassment, but celebration. Um, Ms. Uh, Finch has uh, been appointed as our uh, Director of Community Services. Fantastic. Give her a big hand. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting times. So, not to put that down, but um, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> not the same thing. We had an opportunity to go to see Wizard of Oz, and it was fantastic. So, uh, Corona offers quite a bit besides recreation on a playground. It offers uh, opportunity for being recreated, or not that word, getting into recreation with the uh, OBC Theater and next door at the uh, uh, Historical City Hall. And that was fantastic. Yeah, we had, uh, had purchased front row seats because we won them, otherwise I couldn't afford those. But it, it was just amazing, just the, just the scenery, the artistry behind the choreography and the voices and the kids interacting with the other mentors, adults, and it was just a fun time. So if you get a chance to see any OBC theater type activity, I go see that. 
And then lastly, I want to say that I'm looking forward to seeing more murals in Corona, and hopefully the ones we have at the park that happened here last month, and the one that we'll see tomorrow at the Senior Center, or be just springboard to other ones in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Munoz. Commissioner Wentworth? I'm just going to keep my remarks really brief, but um, I want to thank the, the staff for all their hard work and um, really appreciate all the events that are going on and you can see just the movement in the community. I hope that we can um, better publicize things and, and keep working in that vein because you guys are really putting on fantastic programming. Um, Arbor Day being a great example, but yet people don't know what to expect and so getting that message out to the community makes makes it a, a important and it makes it a big deal. And we are now doing Arbor Day more successfully than we have in the past. And I'm recalling a previous Arbor Day at City Hall um, that was not well attended and not publicized and just no fanfare. Um, to see this kind of move in a direction where again, it's starting to become a signature event for the city. You're moving it in that direction slowly but surely. So that's wonderful got the urban forest. We have a lot to be proud of for Arbor Day. So I'm hoping that we will just continue with that momentum. Um, and just thank you to the staff and congratulations, Mrs. Finch, on your new position. Thank you, Commissioner Wentworth. Vice Chair Bass. I wanted to say in the past three days, I've been at two different parks for hours pushing swings. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you for everyone's hard work to make the community and the park such a great place where I can see so many kids out there running around and parents and um, older kids out using the field. So just all the work that goes into making these spaces um, so lively. Thank you for all the hard work. And yes, congratulations. Thank you, Vice Chair. And um, I echo my fellow commissioners' um, sentiments. Um, terrific work. I love what we're doing with the parks. The parks are loved by our community. They're needed by our community. Um, so keep up the good work there. Uh, in terms of the publicity, yeah, not only what we're going to do, I think we do a pretty good job of what we're going to do, but maybe let's brag about what we did do. You know, the, the turnout we had, what, you know, the, the folks who, um, you know, the cleanups, the the events we did, the follow-up, you know, those are those are good things to brag about and keep the, the public engaged with. Oh, shoot, I missed it. I'll go to the next one, right? Give them a little FOMO. I like it, you know? Um, and uh, that's really that's really it for me tonight. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Finch, on your uh, appointment as, as permanent director. And with that, we'll adjourn. I will adjourn. Thank you for joining us at the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. We will adjourn this meeting at... 7.28, we beat 7.30 by two minutes. The next meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission is scheduled for Tuesday, April 9th, beginning at 6 p.m. right here in the council chambers. Thank you and good night.